What is up, anglers? We're back with California Fishing News, and it is January 24th. A couple notes before we start talking about fishing. Uh, if this is your first time, we get a few new listeners or viewers every week. Uh, if it's your first time and you're listening to this, there's also a video version, basically, on YouTube. It's designed so you don't have to watch it. You can definitely listen to it and get all the good information out of it. But on the video, you do get some photos of some stuff. Uh, when I look at temp charts, stuff like that, you get a, a visual part, too. So there's a little bit extra added to the visual one. So if you're just listening to it and you ever want to check it out on your computer, check us out on YouTube. And vice versa, if you do find this on YouTube, uh, it is in all of the uh, podcast apps, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. So you can download it, subscribe there, and then listen to it on your car on your way to work. Um, you know, quick listens are generally about 20 minutes. So uh, it's a nice way to keep you excited about uh, fishing. Speaking of being excited about fishing, I know in January it's easy to get down and get lazy because it's cold and the fishing isn't that good and we don't have that many options uh, with rock fishing being closed in Southern California, but take it from someone who spent two winters living in Washington, D.C., where the river I would fish would literally freeze over some of the time. We're pretty blessed uh, in Southern California to have the fishing options we do year-round, whether it be fresh with water with largemouth or even the surf fishing, excellent surf fishing that's happening year-round right now. Um, we really do have really good options, so uh, don't complain too much, and if you feel like it, there's always something to go fish for. Uh, so let's get into it. First story I want to talk about is surf fishing again. It's really been the star of the show to me these past few weeks. Uh, just great fishing happening. Um, it might not be so good this week because we've got the big surf rolling in Southern California, so it's going to be a little tougher to find the good conditions. But this last week saw plenty of really big perch caught, uh, up to 17 inches is the biggest one I saw. So, I mean, that's a slab barred surf perch, ate the Lucky Craft Flash Minnow. Um, there's also some good sized yellowfin croakers caught this week. There was a bunch more corbina caught this week. Um, there was a diamond turbot caught out of the surf this week. Uh, and there was a couple more other exotics we'll get to as this week's uh, catch of the week at the end here um, that were all caught in Southern California. Uh, I always thought the corbina and the elephant croaker too are more of a summertime thing, but the past, I guess, couple of years, I was talking to the guy who's been having a really good uh, winter, uh, and he said there's there's been more summertime fish up in, he's in the Orange County area uh, this winter than he's ever seen before. So don't think because it's winter, there's no fish around in the, in the surf. There's possibly more and some really, really good ones. Um, there's also still some halibut biting in the surf. I mean, I don't think that halibut surf fishing is ever wide open, uh, but they're in there. And I saw uh, a guy caught a 27 incher from the surf this week on a Lucky Craft. So uh, legal halibut being caught in the surf, huge sparred surf perch. Um, and then you also have the option, you can go fish off the rocks, use a little piece of shrimp and you can catch opali, rock grass, uh, stuff like that. So there are plenty of options to catch or fish to catch from the shore. Speaking about halibut, there's also a bunch being caught uh, in boats too. Here's a picture of Mitch, a homie. Uh, he's the, the deckhand on the Pacific Voyager. He got a really nice one this week. I don't know the depth they're fishing. I'm not an expert. I haven't targeted halibut very much, but you go out there and you try different depths, you know, meter around for bait, structure, all the, the normal stuff, uh, and then try different depths. If you get one, they say stick to that depth because generally, you know, if you find one in, let's say, 80 feet of water, they usually will stack up in 80 feet of water. But uh, the fact that they're getting them in the boats, these nice big ones, and they're catching some legos even in the surf and some shorts in the surf shows, they're probably pretty spread out. So uh, you got a good chance at catching some nice flat fish this time of year. And besides that, there's also been those winter yellowtail. We talked about the home guards running around. The focus has been between like Mission Beach and La Jolla. Uh, but, you know, there's been some dope that they're also all the way down to Imperial Beach and then all the way up to Del Mar. So don't think you have to, you know, fish for boats. Go look and if you do find them on your own, you got a lot better chance of getting them to bite. They haven't been all that willing to bite. People have been metering them down deep a lot, and when they are, they haven't really been that willing to eat a yo-yo, but that doesn't say none have been caught. They're having some caught on the yo-yo. I've seen more being caught on surface irons when they catch them pushing bait up to the surface. Uh, apparently, recently, this has been an afternoon thing, even late afternoon around sunset. Uh, so if you've got a little skiff that can go fish inshore, it could be a great time of year to go out, uh, drift for yellow tail, or drift for halibut, uh, in the early a.m., early afternoon, and then go take a look around for yellowtail uh, towards sunset. So you got a chance of having a really, really good day out there uh, with some nice yellowtail halibut, besides the, uh, the other species we'll talk about next. As far as party boat options go, our next topic, it hasn't really changed since last week. You've got the 1.5 day trips, fishing colonnette, they leave Friday night, come back Sunday. This last weekend, the yellowtail pretty much pulled a no-show, um, but they caught a bunch of really big reds and some link odds. Here's a photo from the Pacific Queen. 
Uh, really, really good quality ground fish. I guess it's been better this year than it has been the past couple of years for those. And they still saw some yellowtails, I guess, this week, yellowtail, but uh, they just kind of, I think one boat got one and a bunch of boats blanked on them. So, but you still got a shot at them. You never know when they'll turn on uh, and plenty of great eating fish there to be caught. More locally, uh, you can go like out of the Sea of Forth Landing, take the three quarter day trips to the South Nine and catch rockfish there as well. Those trips are 105 bucks if you're Mex including the Mexican license. Um, and then apparently there's been really, really good quality rockfish being caught down there as well. And Link Cod, sheep said a little bit of everything. Uh, and then of course you have the local, basically sand dab, sculpin, and sand bash trips, which, you know, there's, they're running everywhere from San Diego up through uh, LA. And some days they do really well, other days they don't do so well, but you got an option if you're just itching, you can go on a half day, uh, catch some sand dabs, catch some soap and maybe some nice sand bass. Um, so you still have options, there's still plenty of places you can go fishing. It's just with the rockfish being closed till March, it's a little bit limited, but uh, don't think that you can't get out and go fishing anywhere. Moving on, freshwater. I know I don't talk about green bass very much, largemouth, especially in Southern California with the pressure. People are really weird about it. But there was a couple of guide reports posted from some of my favorite reservoirs up north in the state, so I wanted to talk about them really quick. Um, first one is at Berryessa. And the guys went out on the 19th. Water temp was 51 to 53 degrees, clarity of 4 to 8 feet. Uh, and they said they got a few on the uh, A rig in the morning. They were letting it fall about 30 feet and so there was some reaction stuff some kind of fish chasing bait around then and then after 9 a.m the bite seemed to shut down and they went and they they had to narrow around and kind of look for bait balls and look for fish there they did get a couple out of it they said it was really hard work um, they got a couple good ones a four and a half pound spotted bass and a three pound largemouth uh, they ran about 45 feet of water so still fishing pretty deep and they said they had to use a small four inch worm and almost dead stick it just put it down there and leave it uh, you know fish are sluggish in that cold water um, it's also with the water temps that low, it's a good time to try the, the spoons. I think I talked about it last week, but I read in like one of the bass magazines years ago, I don't even know how true it is, but that some of shad will start dying off from the cold about 54, 55 degrees. So when you start getting under that, it's a good time to start fishing those flutter spoons. That's a good way to cover the water column, um, and trick some of those lazy sluggish fish into biting. The other one we had a report from, it's not much of a report, but there's a little bit, it was from Clear Lake, uh, from Clear Lake Guide Service. They went out on the 17th, so a week ago today. Um, and they went out from for about three hours and they caught 10 fish, so not bad. Obviously he's a guy in the lake, he really knows what he's doing up there. Uh, he said the water temp was 46 degrees, the visibility is about three fish, or three feet, and the fish were deeper in fat. He didn't mention a depth, um, but you know, there's still, there's still fish to be caught up there. So uh, there's a couple of photos here if you're watching of their really nice fat largemouth. Um, so you can check this out. Both of these reports came from NorCalFishReports.com. Uh, so if you're ever in the northern part of the state and you don't know what's happening, you can check out that website. Uh, next, just talking about Upper Owens real quick. There's been some really good fly fishing uh, with some of the mellow weather. The snow kind of all melted, the first snows they got. They got a little bit more, uh, but uh, this is the guide I follow up there at Tom Lippin. It's Rip and Lips Fly Fishing on Instagram. And he had a pretty awesome post this week where he took this eight-year-old girl out uh, and he said after she, you know, paid attention, she was good, she learned, and then she got six or seven on her own uh, on the fly, even this, like, looks like a two, three pound brute, beautiful rainbow. Uh, so she was super, super stoked. That just seems awesome to get, you know, a young girl like that into fly fishing. Uh, so if you're ever in the Mammoth area, you don't feel like skiing, you have other options, you can head back down the hill, fish the Upper Owens, and if you don't know uh, where to start or what to do, you can look up Tom, it is Rip and Lips Fly Fishing on Instagram, uh, and he'll take you out. Boom, moving on. It's a quick one this week. Like I said, January, not too much new to say, uh, but a couple events I want to talk about. First, uh, the Alpine Beer Fishing Team meeting is Sunday, February 2nd, uh, 9 a.m. They do the big raffle every year uh, or every month, and they give away a bunch of really cool stuff. It's kind of a cool deal. You can follow them on Instagram as well. It's not really a fishing team. It's just if you catch a fish and you post it with Alpine Beer or Alpine Piece of Gear on, you're entered, and whichever one gets the most likes every month gets a $100 gift card to Alpine Beer. So... They make really good beer. It's cool, they're sporting fishing. Cool little thing that they do. And the uh, events have a really nice raffle, so you can go up there and win some good stuff. And the next event I wanted to mention is there's a Lucky Craft Surf Bonanza tournament. It's tomorrow, so it's probably a little late notice if anyone you know, is trying to go. But uh, it's tomorrow. It is in Long Beach. 
basically it's twenty five dollars to enter, but you get two Lucky Craft lures and a sticker. Lucky Craft lures. I mean, the flash minnows are like eighteen bucks, nineteen bucks each. So twenty five bucks, you get a couple Lucky Craft lures. Not a bad deal at all. Um, there's a ten dollar side pot for biggest halibut, and then uh, yeah, it's a tournament from seven to noon. You take photos with them on a measuring. They go by inches and. And that's about it. They do one every month, it looks like, until May. They've got it January, February, March, April, May, and then the top five championship is in June. And they're all in the kind of a, anywhere from Dana Point, Long Beach, Santa Ana, Bolsa Chica, and Seal Beach, so up in that area. But, um, yeah, it'd be a good place to go. And even if you're not great at throwing the lucky crap in the surf, uh, you can go and talk to the guys, learn, meet the community. It's pretty cool. Speaking of throwing them in the surf, I've done it. A little bit. I'm not an expert by any means. I've got one legal halibut in the surf on my Lucky Craft ever, and I've thrown it too many times. Uh, but there's a discussion in the West Coast Surf Fishing Group on Facebook. I'll also recommend you checking that out if you're into surf fishing at all. Uh, but uh, one guy asked about what gear most of these guys are throwing it on. And, you know, I've always just thrown mine on my whatever, eight foot shadow stalker, just, you know, a, my Corrado, little bait casting gear, because that's what I use for bass, for spotties, and that's what made sense to me. But the guys that are doing it in the surf that do it well, it seems like a lot of them are using really long rods and they're using spinning gear. Uh, we're talking nine, nine and a half foot rods and uh, like a spin fish or a pen, something like that, but a nice big uh, spinning reel. And then they're spooling up with braid. There's some discussion. Some guys fish straight braid. Some guys add uh, fluorocarbon leader. Just said, you know, 20 bucks a lure. You don't want to go too light. So pretty much 15 pound fluorocarbon is the lightest people said. And then anyway, up to some people tie it straight on 30 pound braid. Um, but yeah, if you're into surf fishing, I would highly recommend hopping in that group. It's pretty cool. They, there's some guys who don't post location and some guys that are pretty happy posting location of where they're getting fish. And all of the fishing groups on Facebook that I'm in, uh, they seem to be a really, like, a, a nice community happening there. So you can check that out on Facebook. Last, and this is a new thing I want to start, but every, so every week I'll be doing the Catch of the Week, which is just whatever I thought was the coolest catch this week. Uh, and this week it was an angler named Gary Thurner. He's also the angler who caught a 27-inch halibut in the surf this week. And he caught uh, a bunch of Corbina this week. So, I mean, he's on fire. But he was fishing in the Orange County area, and he caught two stripers on back-to-back -back casts on the Lucky Craft. So I know it's not like they're incredibly rare, uh, but I've surf fished every year, and I've never caught one or seen anyone catch one in, in San Diego. I know they are caught every, you know, there's a few caught every year, uh, but it's pretty crazy that he caught two on back-to-back -back casts. Um, they were nice. I think they were 20, 20... 22 inches. I'm searching for the photo now if you're watching it. Yeah. It's in the group though and he mentions location. I'm not going to blow it up because it's not my fish to say, but the group's pretty open. He posted freely, so come get in that group. Uh, join the community and you can learn. Here's a photo of him with some nice Corbina. That was on January 20th and then it was a couple days before that. I think it was last Thursday, so eight days ago now, he caught the two stripers on back-to-back -back casts. So pretty rad. It's definitely on the bucket list to catch a Southern California striper. I know the guys up in the Bay Area uh, get them more often when they run. Um, but it goes to show, you never know what you'll catch in the surf. Especially in the, the Lucky Crafts this time of year. Uh, you can get leopard sharks, big perch. You can snag rays. I don't think the rays normally hit them too much, but sometimes they'll swat at them. Um, and then stripers. You never know when you'll get a random like white sea bass short or something around too in certain areas. So... Here's a photo of that uh, striper, one of the ones he caught. Uh, so yeah, way to go, Gary, man. You had a great week. That's it. Like I said, short one this week, right? 14 minutes. Uh, so that's it, guys. Thank you for people who told your friends. Thank you to everyone who subscribed already. Uh, if you haven't yet, leave us a review or me a review in the App Store. I went and looked, and there was nine reviews. I thought that was really cool. The last time I looked, there was only one. So thank you to everyone who who left me a, a review there. And yeah, subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on your app. Uh, send questions or reports you want to feature to California Fishing News on Instagram, CaliforniaFishingNews at gmail.com, uh, and we've also got a Facebook page, so it's up there as well. Um, besides that, tight lines, good luck, and don't think that just because it's cold in January you can't go fishing. Um, there's still plenty of fish to be caught. And I'll talk to you guys next week.